Um, thank you for inviting me, uh, Kuhn. I'm very happy to be here. My name is Hans Behrens. I will, will be talking about work in progress together with uh, Fleur Deken and my colleague Jochem Hummel. We're all from the VU in Amsterdam, the KIN Center for Digital Innovation. I will be talking about a different kind of platform, an innovation technology uh, platform. We will be talking really about the realm of markets and, and strategies of corporations uh, within these uh, markets. So the focus of, of these platforms is smart homes. Um, what we observe, broadly speaking, in, in, in strategy and innovation management is this broad shift from products to services and now to uh, platforms. And we have seen quite a lot of studies on platform strategies, uh, but mostly focused on single uh, platforms or competition between uh, comparable platforms. Less so about connections between platforms. And let me illustrate that. And let's try to get rid of this message, which is really annoying. And uh, if somebody knows how to resolve that, uh, I've been struggling with it for months already. Um, <laughs> yes, please do believe me. Um, the platform, as you, as you may know, and the definition was, was already mentioned, uh, refers to a, a mechanism for organizing interactions between two sides, between suppliers, users. Um, but there's also an engineering aspect uh, to it. That um, a platform consists, concerns of a, a core, a core product, and peripheral products that, that add to the core, so that they allow to work together. So think of a smartphone and apps. Think of a video game console and games for the video game console. So, and as long as you open up your platform for others, to develop those complements, you create a system in which, um, uh, which others, complementers, can create those uh, products. And you also create a kind of a two-sided market between users and the complementers who develop those uh, complements. And that's the game that, that Apple plays, that these video uh, game console makers like Xbox and, uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, PlayStation do. Um, we know quite a lot about that, like how you should try to get both sides uh, on board. But typically, it's either this one pl uh, platform that's being studied or similar platforms that are in competition. Um, we label this, this paper, this is not VHS versus Betamax, because that's the, the traditional textbook case, that it was two types of platforms, VHS versus Betamax in the video uh, uh, recorders. Um, but it can get more difficult when you can get connections across platforms. So think of one simple example. If you use TripAdvisor, you book a hotel, you see a button on the website that says, uh, order an Uber to get me to the hotel. So there we see an integration between TripAdvisor as platform and Uber as a, as a platform. These can be considered very complementary. It gets more difficult when these multiple platforms are also competitors. And that is the case in this smart home market that I will be uh, talking about. So if these interact, if the one platform can also draw upon the other platform, dynamics will, uh, uh, will become more complex. So what we wanted to study is how these platform providers make decisions about compatibility. So the kind of products their platform interoperates with, is compatible with, and how they organize that compatibility based upon their own standards, their own set of rules, or the standards, the interfaces of others. And we want to investigate that from a dynamic, processual uh, perspective. And we do so in the smart home industry. So the, this is an industry, um, not sure whether it's really yet an industry because it's converging from all kinds of uh, dom uh, domains. There have been firms active in it from the 1960s uh, onwards, but uh, currently many more firms are jumping upon it. And the promise is that you'll have all devices in your home that are smart, connected, and that you'll be able to control them together. So that you may have an evening routine that 
will turn off the thermostat, that will turn off your lights, uh, maybe lock the doors, but also that uh, these may interact together, like when the, uh, 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 the, there's a sensor that notes that there's some strange activity going on in your front yard, that the lights may go on and, uh, and so forth. Or when uh, your smart washing machine uh, may be turned on when the, uh, the, your smart meter notices that elect electricity is uh, quite cheap or that's a peak uh, in your uh, solar cells. Um, the problem, however, is that all these, uh, these products like Nest, like uh, Philips U, they often rely on different protocols. So here's a set of uh, 20 different protocols that they use. And for the consumer, if you go to the, to the store and you want to buy your products, this means that you're, you cannot really be sure if things work properly together. Um, so one quote here that says, for buyers, it may, may seem like smart home is still in a wild west phase, with both consumers and manufacturers waiting to see who wins the 20 man bar fight. So in a sense, uh, it's a kind of a test of the, the earlier idea of convergence. Kuhn explained that due to the network effects, the more users, the more suppliers, the more users, the more complementers, developing complementary products. So these, this reinforcing network effect that it will lead to a natural monopoly or at least one or a few uh, dominant players. Here, we do not yet see that. So we, uh, we identified uh, 94 platform providers, firms, who, who promise to offer the platform that allows you to integrate different complementary uh, products. From, some, uh, from home automation uh, itself, so incumbent firms, uh, but also from different sectors. And uh, Amazon has jumped on it, uh, Apple has HomeKit and the HomePod, Google is, is onto it. So from all kinds of different directions, people are jumping on it. So if you're Philips, and we work uh, quite a lot with Philips, this means that you're certainly an, an, an interoperable. <laughs> interoperable or not. Uh, so in trouble or interoperable. And yeah, and both are, I think, uh, the question indeed. Uh, and you ha have to make smart decisions about should you, should you compete with the Googles, Apples, or uh, position yourself as a, as a complementer. Um, in terms of methods, so. Um, I like to do qualitative research, in-depth studies. Sometimes we do single case study and then people ask, why only one case? And then you do three cases and then people say, why not more cases? And we submitted the paper with nine cases. And then they said, why only nine cases? So for this study, we said we want to have them all. So uh, with uh, students, we, we uh, searched the web extensively to document all of these smart home platforms that, that promise to integrate all these complementary products. Uh, we found 225 potential cases, which we narrowed down to uh, 94 of them. Identified four archetypical strategies, which I will explain in a bit, and then charted the history of these uh, uh, platform providers in terms of the strategies that they used over time. Um, and then we used this technique called optimal matching to find patterns in these sequences. So the four strategies that we identify um, are these. First, a closed strategy, a closed platform. And that's uh, how many incumbents in this, in this domain have started. They come up with the, the complementary products, with the sensors, with the, uh, with, the, with the lights, with the switches. They produce them and they let them uh, integrate with their own platform through their own protocols. Um, then we have orchestrators. Uh, the prime example here is Apple. Apple tries to play the same game that it plays with the, with the iPhone and with all the, all the apps. Uh, they offer this, this service called HomeKit, launched in 2014. It's not the big success that we would expect from an Apple product yet. Um, so they force others uh, who develop complementary <coughs> products, like Philips, who develops these U lighting uh, systems. They have to incorporate a chip to adhere to the communication protocol of Apple so that 
Apple, in a sense, controls the interfaces and can play the orchestrator game that it likes to uh, play. Um, they, well, are not that successful yet. We found about five, six other cases who also attempted this uh, strategy, uh, but they also quickly uh, moved away from it because it's, it's a difficult one to play. One, another strategy that we see more often now is uh, a connector strategy. So instead, instead of defining your own interfaces, your own protocols, your own rules, you try to follow the rules set by others. But given that there are so many of these interfaces, rule sets already available, you end up with, uh, with platforms that call themselves a platform, but are actually following all the uh, interfaces specified by others. For example here, Wink, uh, this is their hub, the central brain of the home. And if you open it up, you'll see seven or eight different types of antennas. So to receive all these wi different wireless si uh, signals from these different uh, products. And they promise we will be truly open and accepting all of the standards and protocols that exist in today's market. But that means that they have to continuously update to connect to the others' uh, protocols. And if new protocols come on the market, they will have to uh, adapt, adapt to that. Um, finally, the last uh, category are these complementary platforms who emphasize mostly their own complementary products. And they don't care that much whether they'll be used with other platforms as well. Um, we explained that there are two types of tensions uh, involved. Um, that the one strategy, doing it all on your own, a closed platform, is very good in uh, delivering high quality integration. Everything will work together properly. If you're a connected platform in the, in the lower right quadrant, you can connect to all kinds of different devices and work with all these different uh, partner firms, but it's very hard to make it all work smoothly. Um, if you play on uh, in the right upper quadrant, the, the, the platform orchestrator game, you can have the rents of controlling the, the ecosystem. Um, but difficult game to play, if you're on the lower uh, left uh, quadrant, you can primarily focus on selling your own uh, complement. So these are four uh, uh, archetypical strategies that have these tensions, and because there are tensions, you'll also see changes over time. So that is what we uh, documented. And in this graph, um, you see the, the frequency with which a typ typical strategy was employed at a certain moment in time, ranging from 1988 to 2017. So you'll see that most of the cases started off with a closed strategy, or that was dominant uh, at first. Um, over time, other strategies emerged. Uh, but what particularly emerges are combinations of strategies. So we find that they start to stack strategies on top of each other. They start to combine uh, strategies. One example of that is this platform uh, called Instion, starting off with a closed strategy, doing quite well, getting a fair share of users, and because they have users, they think that they can start to play the the orchestrator game, inviting others to develop also complementary products for their, uh, for their platform when they pay a license fee, uh, but not really successful. So later they also add a connector strategy in which they connect to the protocols using the protocols of these other firms. Um, this is one example, and we mapped all these trajectories, and we, uh, through cluster, cluster analysis, we find these three types of uh, trajectories. Um, so the instant example is in cluster one, starting from a closed strategy, often adding uh, this orchestrator strategy, trying to orchestrate the whole ecosystem, uh, typically failing to do so successfully, adding and then adding a connector and or complementer strategy. Then we see a cluster of cases where they um, start with a connector or complementer strategy and then combine the two. And finally, a cluster of cases that start with a closed strategy and then add a connector strategy. Um, 
the, the consequence of these, of these combinations of strategies um, are actually quite uh, severe, both for these firms, for the industry, as well as for users. So let's turn to these, uh, these implications. Um, so the fact that, they, uh, that these, these platforms combine different strategies, some do their, uh, for instance, having a closed approach for their own products that they are good at, an open approach for others, results in this proliferation of protocols. So if you, as a user, for instance, have, have some window blinders of this one company with, who excels in window blinders, um, according to the protocol of that company, um, you won't change quickly to another, uh, to another platform uh, because that would require you to change your window blinders. And if you're happy with them and you do not want to ruin your maybe two, three thousand euros that you spend on them, you're stuck with that. Uh, so this means that for users, you get locked in. Um, for existing users, for new users, they are confronted with this proliferation and this, this, this obscurity of different uh, systems. So, and this is a, a pattern which might counteract these forces of convergence that you uh, refer to and that we see in many other platform industries. Uh, but still, this might also be, I think, happening, be happening beyond this uh, smart home uh, world. Uh, in Internet of Things, in general, we see uh, the same uh, problem of these different technological standards uh, which make interoperability an issue. Um, within uh, fintech, it might become an issue where we also see that banks now try to play the, the, this, this, play this platform uh, game um, and they'll also have to face these choices. And this, that may end up also with a similar kind of situation in which we have, on the first sight, great variety of choice, but in the end, for, uh, for customers, uh, a horrible uh, situation. Um, so implication, we, I think we have a very nice uh, study that shows the, uh, the development of platform strategies in one single uh, industry. Uh, we theorize about this phenomenon of multiplexing, like stacking strategies on top of each other, um, which counteracts the tendency towards the convergence and winner takes all. And we think that this has to do a lot with the physical nature of the products uh, involved. Like, if you have these products in your home, like your window blinders, your lighting, first, you won't change them that easily as if you would change the, the software on your computer. Um, second, uh, they can't be updated that easily. Some have their embedded software, but that's also limited. You can't update everything. You can uh, uh, update your Tesla quite a bit, but there are also limited limitations to the specifications of the hardware already. Uh, so we think that because of this, these physical characteristics, uh, there is much less tendency and this platform game is, well, much more fragmented than you would see in other uh, industries. That was it.